Will you pray with me? Lord, we're just so grateful for our ability to give back to you for the ministry of your church. And just as this song has said, we may think we may not have much, but may we truly give ourselves. And if we give ourselves to you in whatever way that that is translated in our gratitude to you, that you are glorified. We thank you in this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I, uh, I was reading a little bit online not long ago, and, and I saw a, a story on AOL. And it talked about a woman who recently received a bunch of letters, a, a pack or stack of letters that were written by then her fiancé as he was going off to fight in World War II. So many, many, many decades had passed, and she finally had received those letters. And it shared how when she had gotten those letters, and she began to read about the love that he had for her and the affinity and, and brought back all of those memories of just uh, wonderful opportunities and love that they had in their life. Have you ever received a love letter? I've received a love letter from a time or two from, from, from my wife and, and um, they're very special occasions and, and I don't expect these all the time, but I know when she gives them to me, they really, really mean the world to me. And many of you, I know, have received little love notes or love letters as well. Uh, I want to share with you a story about a, a gentleman who did receive a love letter, and I'm going to read to you what the letter says. It says, Dear Johnny, now, obviously it's not starting off very good, is it? <clears throat> it says, No words could ever express the great unhappiness that I have felt since breaking our engagement. Please say that you'll take me back. No one could ever take your place in my heart, so please Please, please forgive me. I love you, I love you, I love you. I am yours and yours alone forever. Sign Marie. And down at the bottom, it was scratched in a PS. Congratulations on winning the $142 million Powerball. <laughs> you know, <laughs> love is, uh, is an amazing thing, isn't it? And uh, when we're touched by love, it, it really is a life-changing event. And I thought about in my life, you know, the birth of our children, the birth of our grandchildren, uh, when I met my wife, all the events um, of, of, of love that we have shared, and God has been so gracious to me, uh, gracious beyond anything I should ever deserve. And to think about what love does, and we share love in our interpersonal relationships too, don't we? You know, as we come together as a church and as we make friends and as we endear ourselves and, and get to know each other's stories in a deeper way, we begin to sense an even more profound way of how we can love each other and what that interpersonal love relationship means. So it's not just something that we experience in our families, but it's something that we experience in our friendships and in our church family. But, you know, it, it really even goes beyond that because God says that our love is to be something that should not be contained in the walls of any building, should not be contained in, in just mere words that we share, but our love should be shared and, and should be instrumental in any and everything that we are. You know, to listen to the Bible's words about love, it says that, you know, uh, God created us out of love so that we should love each other. And, and I want to believe that that's, that's an easy thing to do at times, to love each other. But then I kind of go back and I say, but there are so many times that I know that I'm unlovely uh, when I uh, do things that I shouldn't do or say things that I shouldn't say in heated moments or frustration. But there's something about this love that God has for us, this love that never ends, this love that uh, outreaches and outlives all things. Well, we're in week number two of our series, Building a Life of Excellence, and, and uh, we focused last week because this really is an opportunity for us to focus on being stewards of all that God has given to us. And last week, uh, we talked about how uh, in the Genesis story, it said that God created them, God created male and female, and, and uh, by doing that, that God basically said to his entire creation, that I'm, I'm going to allow you, humanity, to have dominion or power or control over, over the things that I've created. But we also learned that, that being a steward means that we are to just manage, not own, but manage the things that God has given us uh, that we have in our life and that we are to manage these things, our lives, our finances, our, our um, vocations, our families, whatever the case is, we're to manage that in a way in which God as the true owner should manage. 
We also learned last week that God never releases ownership of anything, but he invites us to partake in his plan. So today we're, we're kind of moving into understanding a little bit more about our role as we grow in our faith, and we're learning a little bit more about what James would say in those words to be not only hearers of the word, but, but to become doers of the word. And how are we to, to grow more than just merely hearing what God's word says, but how do we start applying it in, in the way in which we're to apply it uh, in our life and in all in which uh, we are involved in? And in doing that, I want to just kind of loft out a couple of questions this morning. And I want us to just kind of think about these in a rhetorical way, but I'm asking these questions um, in a serious note because I think it's important that we take time to evaluate these. And here are some of the questions that, that I want to throw out there. Why do we, as the family of St. Paul, do what we do? This month, we actually celebrate our 51st anniversary as a church. And a question that comes off to that is, why did God give life to this church 51 years ago? And what is his expectation of the life of the church another century to two centuries to eternity from here? Questions that also come to my mind are, are uh, our mission is to glorify God, to grow in faith, and to give in love. How do we translate that, not only as a body of Christ, but, but how are we translating that in our own families and in our own spiritual walk? And, and the last question that maybe throw out there is, why is it important for us as a church, as well as any other church, to continue to grow? Why is that more important than to stay the same or to not grow? It's important for us to grow. And I want to boil that down to really what Paul said in his second letter to the church of Corinth. Paul writes this in, in chapter 5, verse 14. He says, we do all the things that we do because Christ's love compels us. Now, the word compel really gets my attention here because that word doesn't say that it's kind of like um, uh, iffy or, or uh, unproblematic or something like that. Uh, to compel somebody to do something, to put because of compulsion, means that there's an urgency, that there's power in, make, in having to do that. There's this urgency level to say it's important to not over, overlook this, but we are compelled to, to love because Christ loves. And that begins to define who we are as a church. And that means that we are a church for a simple reason, that because we were created out of love by God, that we are then to take that love and to translate that love to other people in the world. Now, sometimes we think about translating the word of God and the love of God into the world is that we have to get on a plane and fly to the ends of the earth in order to do that. But you know what? I've learned that uh, it's as simple as walking across the street to your neighbor's house. It's as simple as talking to the person in the cubicle next to you at work or the desk in school and to share with them why you have this great joy in your life, why you have gratitude and, and what causes your life to just bubble over with all of those joyful things. It's because of the love of God. So I began to search for where is a, a good text for us to look at that will get us to that point that really describes the fact of God's love and why he gives us his love and what he expects from us. And I came up with none other than John 3.16. Will you say that verse with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should never die but have eternal life. You know, that statement... That, that statement of what we learned as John the, the Apostle, as he proclaims those words, a couple of things come to mind here. And first of all is, is as John proclaims this in the first century of Christianity, we realize that as he's proclaiming these words that God so loved the world that he gave his son, that this kind of went against a little bit of the early teachings of Judaism. Because Judaism taught in those early days that God's fulfillment and that God's reconciliation of the world would happen through the nation of Israel. And Christianity is the only worldly religion or world religion that basically says that God chooses to do this without, um, uh, without uh, a connection to ethnicity or with gender or with uh, all the things that we kind of get caught up with, that God chooses to give that to everyone, that there's no boundaries, there's no barriers, but that God so loved the world. And John puts into that, and he says that this world that he describes here is really the world of creation. It's the world of everything. And as we live into that world, John notes that, that we begin to find bumpiness in our life. 
that the world in which we live is not always filled with good things, that the world in which we live is filled with challenges. It's, it's filled with things that, that, that make us stumble along the way. And John says that if we will just find ourselves to believe in those words, that God so loved the world that he gave his son, if we could just believe in that, he says that that will begin the journey that will place us along to the path of Jesus Christ. I want to introduce to you um, on video this morning, uh, we're going to see a video of, of Joel and, and Sharon Johnson and, and their family, and they're going to talk to us. Uh, they're a part of St. Paul, and they're going to talk to us about what it means to have a life transformed in Christ, especially the fact because God loves and God created, how is that touched then? And what we'll learn from them is that in their own life, there's been some challenges and priorities and things like that, but how God, through the life of Christ, has reconciled even the Johnsons to that point to know that they are now on this path that God has set for life. So let's watch the Johnsons as they give their testimony here. Um, you know, before we really uh, started, you know, spending so much time here at the church, I think a lot of our activities um, almost kind of excluded the kids. Um, some of our non-Christian friends, um, you know, we would spend a lot of time going out with them late in the evening and, you know, the kids would be home, you know. I mean, Caitlin was old enough for that, but still, uh, it kind of divided the family a bit. Um, and it, it didn't put the children as our priority. And now, <clears throat> most everything we do has involves youth and being with the children. And we do things together uh, way more now than we ever did before. Like we get to be in youth group together and lead small groups and we get to come to craft shows and garage sales and, and work as a team. And there's so many people here that, um, that get to see us working together, which makes them want to work together with their family. Our marriage uh, was, has always been really good, and um, I think just being here and um, the lifestyle that, that you have when you're surrounding yourself with Christian people, it just has intensified our relationship and uh, made us that much stronger. And, uh, and it's been really beneficial for the kids, too. I mean, they, you know, I know they grew up knowing about God, but they, they have a much better appreciation uh, of him now that they're here. And, when we came here, it, the way that the people are and the way that we got to, I don't know, just be a part of something, I guess was something that I really looked forward to all the time. And before, I wasn't really a part of something that I was proud of, I guess. I think that it's, you know, us coming here, we've been able to serve not only as a couple, but we also have been serving. We brought the kids in. Like we just want to be able to give back to you know as much as we can because the church has given us just way more than we could ever you know give back to them. So. Amen. Amen. You know, those words of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, what it does is it teaches us a lot about the word gratitude and the very fact that God chose to give first to us and the, and the extravagance of his gift, which was his son to die on the cross to reconcile the world unto him, that God then would, would see through the son that our sins would be forgiven and that we would have a connection of a new life through that. That says a lot about our gratitude back to God and, and really how we demonstrate that gratitude says a lot about our relationship with God. You know, how are we striving to live our life? How are we serving in the ways in which God calls us to serve? How are we using extravagant generosity through, through our monies and the things that we have that God has freely blessed us with? And that says a lot about this love, and it says a lot about this gratitude that we have in God. It's this whole transformation experience that comes that we see from those moments that we share that gratitude. Now here's a question that I want to ask kind of uh, midpoint in our message today is, is how are you experiencing God's grace in your life? And as you experience God's grace, how are you then expressing your gratitude back to God by all that God has given to you? 
And that's a powerful question that, that leads us not just through this series of stewardship, not through, through just this series of, of understanding how we're going to support the ministries in 2014 and then in the years even after that, but it says a lot about our own life and how we choose to engage and move forward in what life brings for us. And that's, the, that's part of our role as a church, that because God so loved the world that we're called to love those of the world. We're not just supposed to uh, uh, rub elbows with people that are church people, but that we are supposed to go in the world, not to be of the world, but go into the world, and therefore into those places where darkness is, and through the life of Christ to bring the light that comes that we can lead people to life. Because the greatest decision that people will have in their life will come through our words as we share with them the gospel of Christ and the good news that Christ died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. But more importantly, with the foundation of what we see in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he chose to give. You know, I'm thinking ahead about, um, you know, where, where we're going as a church and, and things that are there. And, and, and I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a window into my heart. And I realize in a church our size that not everyone has an opportunity, or no, nor do I have an opportunity, to have uh, time to sit down face-to-face -face with every person who's a part of our church. But I realize that on Sunday mornings, as we gather as a large body, it gives an opportunity for that to happen. And I want to share with you a window into my heart as, as your shepherd. As, as, your, as your pastor to share with you how I see God working in the life of our church. And I know that many of the things that I'm gonna share of my hopes and dreams that you're gonna to say to yourself, that's my hope and dream too. And folks, that's how we know that God is the one who's behind this as we move ahead. And thinking into those things, you know, I, I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of dreams about who we will be as a church. And, and one of the things that, that first and foremost is, I want St. Paul to be a church that cares for others. I want our church to be known that, that we care about people, that, that we are uh, uh, a church that, that looks to uh, help people accept the grace, the love, and the acceptance of God. And then as we come from that, uh, to realize that our church is much larger and the mission is much greater than the buildings that we have or uh, the, the music that we offer on Sunday mornings, or it's much greater than any preaching we might ever have uh, from, from the front here. And, and what we find out is it's not the programs, the buildings, the preaching, the music, the land, or anything else that we have, but we want people to know that St. That Paul is a church where they can come to be loved, where they can see the grace that comes from we who are the members of the church and who are part of this local community. And why do we do that? Because God so loved the world that he gave. Our mission to glorify God, to grow in faith, and to give in love as a church uh, will be a light to people, and, and I know that they'll start saying these words. They'll say, you know that church that meets at the intersection of Highland and Rosary and Largo? That's a church that does things special. That's a church where they accept people unconditionally. That, that I see St. Paul as a church that, that people will know that it doesn't matter you know, what clothes you wear or what income status you are or what community you, you live in or don't live in or what kind of car you drive or how much money you have in the bank, that people will know that none of that matters. But what really matters is that you are accepted here at this church and that we have an opportunity to journey together in Christ and that by coming together and resourcing together that we can fulfill this mission that he has that he's placed before us to glorify glorify God, to grow in faith, and to give in love. But more importantly, what we'll see is by working together that lives will be transformed, like the Johnson story, that it, our lives become even more enriched in what God is doing in us, and instead of separating and pushing us in different directions, that the love of God will bring us closer together. And I want everyone to know that they are welcomed at St. Paul. Why? Why do I want that? Why should we want that? Because God so loved the world that he gave. My heart yearns for the truth to know that, that when people come to this church, that they'll find out that they're just like you and me, not perfect, broken, wounded, sinners, that they'll find out that we're, we're the same thing, that we're not a super righteous people, that we don't look people up and down to, to see whether or not that they're accepted into the doors, that we all know that we're on a journey to know Jesus Christ. And that as we walk along that journey together, we're there to be with each other and to begin that journey. Why, why should we do that? It's because God so loved the world that he gave. I want people to look at St. Paul United Methodist Church and say, that's a church that sticks together. 
that no matter what happens in the community or in families or other things, if someone is going through a tough time, that's a church that doesn't run out. That's a church that runs in and surrounds you with love and faith and grace and hope and blessing. I want people to experience that, and I want people to live into that and say that that that's a church that believes in in growing in faith, that that through our source groups and through our Bible classes and and all the things that we do in children's ministry and youth ministry and adult ministry of all ages, that people will say that this is a church of all generations and that every generation can find a way to connect with Christ and to surround each other and to know that when you're going through a crisis in a life, that this is a church that will not abandon you, but it's a church who will be there. Why do we do that? Say it with me. Because God so loved the world that he gave. I believe deep in my heart that the people will look at St. Paul and say, that's a church where they encourage their community. That's a church where they give a, a, an, uplo- um, an uplifting word. That's a church where they will say that, that if you're down on your luck and you're hard-pressed or something, that they're there to give you a cup of cold water, that they're there to help lift your spirits, to encourage you, to move forward with you so that you don't feel alone. That I want them to see that this is a church where we don't shoot our wounded, but that we bless them and that we raise them out of the pit, so to speak, and we walk with them to the best of our ability to do that and to know that they have acceptance that's here. I want them to know that that this is a church where we teach that God loves you just the way that you are, but too much to let you stay that way, and that God wants you to continue to grow and to receive the blessing that he has for you. Why do we do that? Because God so loved the world that he gave. My heart tells me that when people look at St. Paul, they'll say, that's a church where they serve and they give cheerfully. That's a church that, that, because they have that trait in them, that they're more interested in helping people that need help, that they're a church that will come and gives themselves away. How do I know that? Just a couple of quick examples. Our handicapable ministry that we celebrated today. You know, we, we have almost, a, almost 200 folks come together every Wednesday for worship. And out of that worship, God is praised, and life grows from that. And Patty and I have had an awesome opportunity to go to some of those worship times. And and what an uplifting time it is. And in thinking all the good things that come from that, but then I hear their stories as they come to me and they say, Pastor Bob, we're so grateful for St. Paul. And I'll say, "Well, well, sure, well, we're grateful for you. No, no, Pastor, you don't understand. We were involved at other churches, and they told us we weren't welcome. But St. Paul welcomes us. And we're here. And that's what's important is that that we are a church for all of God's people. I see, you know, our our open arms ministry, we'll probably serve over 20,000 people uh, food products this year, of which about 30% of those or 6,000 will be children. We we continue our outreach ministries of, of serving people in downtown Clearwater for the homeless. We continue to grow ministries within our church and take those ministries out into the community. Why do we do that? Because we want to celebrate the love of Christ wherever we go. And we want people to know that this is a church that cares. But most importantly, we're anchored into the fact that God so loved the world that he what? He gave. I pray that uh, the people will say, well, that's the church where they forgive each other freely. They don't kick you when you're down. They don't move you out of the church because you need forgiveness or because you've committed a sin. But that's a church that will rally around together and love and pray for you and support you, anoint you, whatever is taken that in that sinful state to help get you out of sin and to live a life that God wants you to live. You know, there's so many churches that, that go in the opposite direction. You mess up and they kick you out. There's, there's some churches, unfortunately, that, that look at that, and, and because they want the community to think that they have this high standard of who's allowed to walk in the door, that people will shudder and say, I'm not sure I can go in there, but I'm convinced that St. Paul, everyone knows that they're welcome, and that we're all sinners, and that we're called to walk alongside of each other, and to help bring the light in the vision of that, so that we can move forward in a powerful way to heal people of their sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Why do we do that? Because God so loved the world that he gave. I I want people, most of all in our community, to say that's the church where they're committed not just to themselves, or they're not committed to themselves, they're committed to others. That they see who they are as a reflection in the community. That they don't see their church contained by four walls. How do I know that? Because our live stream ministry currently today is in 33 states and five countries 
and we know that, that it's not just here in this building in Largo, Florida, but that we are worldwide and we are leading and touching and loving people in the name of Jesus Christ. Why do we do that? Because God so loved the world that he gave. You know, if you don't hear anything else, I want you to hear this today. Every day, every hour, every minute, and every second, you have an opportunity to become the person God created you to be. And God is encouraging you, and we're encouraging you to grow into that identity, to blossom in a way of which God is wanting you to blossom, to love him, to demonstrate gratitude, to participate in how we can be in ministry to not only our community, but everywhere that we go. And that's done by de demonstrating our gratitude in God and realizing that all that he has blessed us with, all that he has given to us, that we are stewards of that and to partner together to make sure that, that next year and in the coming years that are there, that we can fulfill this mission and this ministry that he's given to us that changes lives in such a great way. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see more video testimonials that, that will just touch your life in a powerful way, how the ministries of St. Paul United Methodist Church have made a difference, how it has changed and transformed the lives of so many. And that's how we know that Christ is at work. I want to invite you for a moment, if you'll, you'll take this little yellow sheet, which was located inside of your bulletin this morning, and a couple of things I want to just recap as we move forward here is that, that gratitude begins with God. And God models what is meant by total gratitude. And he does that, we learned this morning, through John 3, 16. That for God so loved the world that, that he gave. And we realize that, that because he gave, he calls us to have a heart of giving. We also learned this morning that as his disciples, we demonstrate our gratitude in God by acknowledging all that we've been blessed with. And that through our giving and partnering with God, that the message of transformation changes the world for the good around us. We also learned that our mission to glorify God, grow in faith, and give in love is making a difference through our faithfulness. And that we have the privilege of seeing the goodness that comes to people's lives when they come in contact with Jesus Christ. Well, this week, here's your homework assignment. And I started this last week. I want you to read 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 9, and learn about the Macedonian church, a church that was poorer than, any, poorer than anything could have ever been. But out of their love for God, that they glorified him and demonstrated their gratitude through their cheerfulness and the ways in which they were able to help Paul um, with the ministries of the churches that were in Asia Minor. I also want you to take time and continue your journaling and to look at the words in John 3, 16 and record down what do those words mean to you that God so loved the world that he gave. And at that opportunity, reflect what that means to you. And lastly, I want you to be in prayerful conversation with your entire family because in a couple of weeks on November the 10th, we're gonna have a pledge card and that pledge card is going to be your pledge to our ministries for the coming year. And I want to invite those that are live streaming with us as well that, that you are a part of our church family too and that you have an opportunity to make a, a pledge to support us uh, next year and the years to come. And you can do that by logging onto our website. But for you that are here in the building, for those of us that are here, you'll get a card the week of November the 3rd. Now normally in the past, we've gotten those pledge cards out in advance and people have filled them out and brought them in and, and given them to us well in advance of what we call Celebration Sunday. I don't want you to do that. You're not going to get the card until the week of the 3rd because on the 10th, Celebration Sunday, we're going to all fill out the cards in worship as a, as a spiritual act of worship and allowing God to move through us through those weeks of praying about what God is asking us to do and support in the ministry of his mission through St. Paul United Methodist Church. This past week, you should have gotten a letter from me. How many of you actually got a letter that came out? Okay, good. I found out that our folks in Tarpon Springs um, didn't get it yet, but in that letter, you should have gotten what is called a gratitude note. See, I've already filled mine out. And if you take a look on these boards or these walls that we have around here, you'll see that we had some participation in our nine o'clock service this morning. If you didn't get a gratitude note, our ushers who are standing up here will actually have one for you. 
But what we want to do is we want to take time and we want to give great gratitude to God for all that he has done and given to us in blessing. I've written down a couple of them here. And in a few moments, as Sean and the praise band come back out, we're going to take a moment to uh, just uh, get out of our seats and to come as God just moves you to go ahead and put that on this wall. And then during our services, we're closing in our songs. I'm going to take a time and read some of these to you. And folks, let me tell you, it was powerful, totally powerful at our last service. So what are you going to do in a few minutes? Uh, God's going to uh, release us in a sense to say, go to these boards and put your gratitude cards up. Peel away, so just peel it off, put it up here, go back to your seat. If you need a gratitude note, seat one of the ushers, and you'll have time to write your gratitude note out. And we want to fill these walls up in the next couple of weeks. For those of you live streaming with us, email us and let us know what you're grateful for, and we'll fill out a card for you. Here you are over here. We'll fill out a card for you. And... Uh, Hey, you try to watch three or four different cameras back here. It's not as easy as it looks. I'm grateful that they're gracious, that they're letting me make an error to look over here. So fill out, uh, we'll be happy to do this for you. But we want to thank God for all that he's doing. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Loving God, um, as we come together, we are truly grateful. We are grateful for all that you are in our life. We're grateful for those words that John proclaims, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should never die but have eternal life. Lord, as we go through this time of planning for our ministry for next year, as we lead up into November the 10th, to making a pledge as to what we'll do in support of those ministries. God, today, we want to just focus on demonstrating how grateful we are for you and how we want to express that gratitude. Father, thank you for the ways in which you're gracious to us. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch your church across the world universal, that in those places in our community, in our neighborhoods, and in the world around us that are fractured and broken in the need of your grace, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would answer those calls that you would grace them with your love and your presence. And may we, the people of St. Paul, begin by celebrating today the gratitude we have. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we sing, as we begin to come forward, as the Lord leads you, just come forward and place your gratitude note on one of these walls. Let's stand up as we...